Good morning, it's Laura here, and I am from Your Last Resort Home Organization and Staging, and it's Friday, so we're back with another weekly video series. And today is a topic that comes up a lot, and that is, how do I organize my kitchen? Um, through Your Last Resort, we've had a couple of clients that we've helped um, organize their kitchen, and so um, that's what we're gonna be talking about today and some great tips for organizing your kitchen. So when we've helped other clients in the past with organizing a kitchen, the very first step we always like to say is kind of do a quick overall and look through what can you get rid of. And that's kind of the same for principle for anything that you are reorganizing. So if you're doing your food, check to see what's expired. What's at the hidden at the very back of the corners of your cupboards that you can get rid of. So start with um, your expired food or even food that hasn't expired but it's not open, you can donate to the food bank as well so it's a great way to get rid of some extra things um, purge look at your look through your closets and your cupboards how many mixing bowls do you need how many pie plates are you using um, see what you can actually get rid of and purge um, there's so many organizations um, like chrysalis house or CMHA that are helping clients to set up new houses of their own and are always looking for donations of things like that for kitchenware to help these clients but before you do make any donation to any of those specific organizations do call them first because they don't have any storage area um, make sure that is something that they need um, so that's a great way to start start by getting throwing things out that are expired purging things that you no longer need and then figuring out what is your optimal location for everything things that you use the most you want to have at arm's reach or eye level and one of the things that we learned as well when we did the video a couple of weeks ago with um, Ann Greener um, the physiotherapist from Julie Scaling's clinic was that especially um, as we age just to make sure not that the heavy things or frequently used things are at the top because if we're climbing on stools or chairs to reach those things um, it there is a high percentage of falling and a lot of fractures that the physiotherapists see from doing things like that so we want to have an optimally organized kitchen as well so those are just some really quick tips um, on what we can do for overall for kitchen organization but so when you think of kitchens you think of organizing you think of containers and things like that um, I know the first thing that comes to my mind is Tupperware so because uh, that they've always they've been around for a very long time and um, are a great resource for helping us to organize our kitchen so I brought in with me today my friend Jen Banks here Hello. <laughs> so this is Jen Banks, and she um, is with Tupperware, and I've known Jen for ooh, several well, years. Yeah, a long time now. <laughs> and um, when she, Jen used to be a blogger, and when I first started my blog, The Valley Family Fun, Jen was very instrumental in helping me get started with lots of advice and things. So um, I brought her on today because um, she kind of morphed into a new life. Do you want to tell us? What you're doing and how long you've been doing it and you said you were 12. <laughs> sure. I um, want to hear this story. So Tupperware has been a part of my life for a long time. Um, when I was really young I joined Tupperware with uh, my parents permission um, when I was 12. Um, it's not really allowed now. Changed, <laughs> but um, So this is my third time actually in Tupperware and third time's a charm. I am a two two-star elite director with Tupperware. If you see the Tupperware car driving around, that is me. <laughs> She's in Kempfell. <laughs> I am in Kempfell. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I think Tupperware is a fantastic organization. Uh, we change a lot of people's lives, so it's kind of become my my passion. Your thing. So, yeah. So we're going to, um, Jen has graciously agreed to give us a little bit of a tour of some of the areas of her house just to give some ideas of how we can organize our kitchens. But um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the advantage of putting things into containers as opposed to just leaving them in their regular packaging. Um, I know like we have the cereal, we can put cereal in containers and um, crackers and things like that, which we're going to give a tour of that. But I know um, from experience that I have a friend who had, and I think it actually happened twice, an infestation of moths. It can happen. In her house. And I know I've had weevils in my flower before, too. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk? Because you just mentioned something that's kind of interesting okay. to me, too. Um, so quite often, um, when, if we get some sort of a critter or a bug in our food, it's usually in our dry storage, our dry foods. And usually we bring it home from the grocery store. And the, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and the reason it is, is because the glue that holds those packagings, the packages together, 
um, is sweet. And, and they'll go after the glue and they'll lay their eggs near the glue. And then we bring it home and we put it in our cupboard and the eggs hatch and it gets into everything. So um, that's, why, that's why I like to get rid of the packaging because I don't want to keep it here. I don't want yeah. that to happen to me. Yeah, so. so it's a great for a safety reason too. And it's also great, just it helps to keep things neat as we'll see in a second too. Helps um, having plastic storage containers is, uh, helps to keep things neat and you can see through it and it helps to keep things organized and labels. So I think we're going to just jump right into our tour because sure. we got lots of things to talk about as we go along. So I am going to flip the camera around and we're going to head first of all into Jen's bathroom. And she's going to let us have a tour um, of her bathroom just to show a few little storage ideas for a bathroom, especially um, if you don't have a lot of space. Yeah. <laughs> especially if you don't have a lot of space. So you want to give us a tour here? Okay, so um, this is my half bath, and this is the bathroom that I use. I live with three boys, so they have the big one upstairs, and I use this one down here. So you need your own space. Mama needs a space. <laughs> yeah. So um, I use modular mates to store. Um, my, my kids do like to dye their hair, but I keep control of the hair dye. So this is all the different colored hair dyes. My brushes, everything's clear so I can see it. Um, I do use a tray for my nail polishes, um, baskets for my dish or my face cloths, but there's none in there right now. Um, and then under here, I use um, a large carry-all for my curling iron, my hair dryer, all that stuff is in there. It's out of the way. The wires are kept neat and tidy. And um, yeah. Great. So, a little tray here you have this well for your... For my makeup, makeup, which, you know, it's it's not perfectly neat, but it's easily accessible. And, and everything is like with like, too, right? Mm -hmm. So you can find things, and things are clear, and it makes it easy to find things. Absolutely. Awesome! <laughs> Yay! Okay, so we're going to come back to the kitchen. Um, yeah, so this actually... Um, Jennifer, let, Jen let out some things that for prompts for us to remember some things we wanted to talk about. And um, this one is important, too, with... We wanted to talk about what happens when containers are broken or um, using things in the microwave. So that's one of the things, too, is when we are um, cleaning out our cupboards and things like that, we want to make sure you're throwing out anything that's broken or anything that's like, what's the word you use, pitted or mottled? Uh, or... Yeah, it can be pitted. So if you, tend to, um, if you tend to use regular plastics in your microwave and you cook anything that's got high fat, so any if you're reheating something like with hamburger in it or something like that, it can create pitting on the sides. Um, and that, that can, uh, it doesn't really, if you're using it on good microwave plastic, it's not an issue. But if you're using it on cheap plastic that's not meant to go into the microwave, then um, you're going to want to get rid of that. Yeah, because um, there are some dangers too. I mean, I, I yeah. don't want to give any scientific information that I don't totally about, <laughs> but it isn't safe to be heating things or reusing the containers that have been melted and in the wrong plastic. In the wrong plastics. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so you've got a broken lid here. So yeah, this one is broken and melted, and this is uh, something that a, a client brought to me, and I had replaced because with Tupperware, the majority of our items are uh, lifetime warranty against cracking, chipping, peeling, or breaking. So if you have something that looks like that, I can get you a free one. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so don't use things that are broken. Get rid of them. Okay, so um, we're going to come along here. Do you want to, What are we doing here first? Um, oh, I'm going to turn the camera around again, sorry. Yep, uh, as go. you were talking about earlier about having things uh, not too high and where you use them. So for me, I do a lot of cooking in the microwave. Um, so I like to have my... The things I use now these are these are microwave safe plastics these ones here so this is pasta cooker and these are rice makers and they're intended to go into the microwave so, they so are... there's right there you can grab them and reach them and they have a home so when I wash them yeah. they go back there I was um... just noticing this up here <laughs> what's this this is not a Tupperware but this is a lazy Susan so we all have these tall bottles that don't go yeah. in the fridge um, that you don't maybe use a lot but but you need them, and I really like using a lazy Susan Where did you for get them. That? Um, Ikea. Yeah. Ikea. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that's good. It, it comes in handy. Yep. Beautiful. All right. Are we gonna move over to spices? Is that what we're doing next? We can do spices next. Okay. Yeah. So this is a great option here too. These are your what do you call them? Spice. These are these are from the modular mate collection. They're spice containers, and these are one cup capacity. Um, so they hold a full cup. And, and they're all labeled so you can see it. And you said to stack them. Um, um, if you go this way, 
they they take up all the space really well like one this way one this way yeah like pie shapes kind of yeah. coming in that's awesome now you were talking about something interesting too about spices and how to keep our spices um by not with the moisture oh that's right okay yeah, so, so talk about that um if you've ever bought spices and they um and they got clumpy um here's a really great trick so many of us will be cooking over a stove and we'll get getting the spices that we'll need and we'll hold it over the stove and we'll pour it into our measuring cup and our measuring spoon the steam will go into your spice shaker and that's what's making your spices really hard so it's really important to stand away from the steam of cooking when you're pouring out your spices you want to keep them fresh um, and not hard and clumpy. That's cool. So you're <laughs> learning lots today. All right, what's next you want to show us? Um, you want to go to modular range? Sure. Or before and after maybe? Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so this is a before cupboard. This is, you know, the average person's cupboard. Yep. <laughs> um, looking at this, you can't tell what's empty, what's full. You have no idea if there's any coffee in the container um, or cereal in the bags. Crackers. Or am I close to needing to replace it? That's right. That's right. So this is my before cupboard. And then if you come over here, this is my after. Woohoo! <laughs> so, beautiful. yeah, what I really like is that I can look at this when I'm making today's grocery day for me. So I know that I need to make my grocery list. So when I look, I can see that I need to buy flour and I need to buy salt. I can add those to the list um, without having to dig open. The other thing about modular mates is that they're built for your cupboard. So some people have shallow cupboards and some people have deep cupboards. I have deep cupboards, so I tend to use the rectangles. This is <laughs> this is a square, so it's built more for a shallow uh, a shallow container. I love the sign on it too. <laughs> Until you get kids. <laughs> yeah. um, the really good thing about modular mates is it uses up all your vertical space. Yeah. And it's putting one item in the whole thing, so you don't have to dig into the back to reach for anything the and they all things. they're all sticking together too they're modular which means that yeah so they can uh, so nothing's in behind i'm not digging yep. or anything like that you can that. see exactly what you have yeah and same up here with my cereals i know i need to pick up cereal another really cool trick about using the cereal containers is if you tend to buy off-brand Nobody knows. <laughs> you can <laughs> hide it. you're pouring it in there and nobody knows no. if you're buying off brand. <laughs> so. In case your kids care about stuff too. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Now, we're going to do the... So the things I don't use as often, yep. I do put down here. So these are my... That's bowls. This is the stuff I don't use as often. Again, in modular mates. And the bowls. That was kind of a neat thing too because... Um, so these ones are lots of bowls. They yeah. stick together, but not with the seals on. These are impression bowls. Just do it down here. Yep. And they are nestable with the covers on. So you don't have to be going hunting through your covers and looking for where all the different pieces are. You're keeping like with like and having things that stack nicely and neatly. Awesome. It doesn't take up much space. Now, one of the main concerns you hear from people all the time is, I'm going to call it an avalanche. An avalanche of Tupperware that as soon as you open the door, I know mine's above the stove, and as soon as you open the door, sometimes it all falls on your head. So how do we prevent that from happening, Jen? Okay, so what I like to do um, is I, I should like say first, I'm going to interrupt you first. Before you do that, go through and throw out anything that's broken or pit it and that you don't need or don't use. And also, I like to match up my lids with the containers first off. So you know you have it. I know that I have a, a top and a bottom. But show us, show us what you're going to tell us. Okay, so my <clears throat> trick is store them upside down. Most this is cool. Yeah, most often when you buy any kind of a container, the, the top of it is wider than the base. Yeah. So if you're stacking things this way and you're putting things away quickly, they're going to go like this. And then you're going to throw something else on top. And that's how you end up with your avalanche. <sighs> but Because we're not you, taking the time to put them in away properly. If you stack them upside down that's a wider base it's going to keep it there and the other thing is nothing's going to get in it no hair is going to fall in it no dust is going to get in it no critters are going to walk in it if you have that issue um, by being upside down it's going to keep the inside cleaner and then the seals which is often an issue for many of us um, I yeah, do have a few lids. Tricks. How do you get the lids from sliding around everywhere? Okay, so I have a, uh, a place for seals. This is a container through Tupperware that you can get to put your seals. It comes with screws, so you can actually attach oh. it to your door if you like, yeah. or you can line them up all up if you have, yep. uh, if you need multiple. 
So we talked about a few other options, like using that shape of the thing that Jen has here. Um, I know I've seen people use file folders that are kind of that shape as well that you can put um, in there. And you said you've had a dish rack in there before, too, I, that you can I use? I have. I, um, before I got that, I actually yeah. used a, a metal wire dish rack and put all my seals in that. On that. you could see them. I've also seen, too, um, and maybe it was on Pinterest that I saw it, um, on the on the door of the cupboard, um, like almost like a hanging file folder that comes out and that you can attach to the door and just stick all the lids in that as well so those are some options so if you have another great option leave it in the comments below so we can everybody can learn from each other too absolutely yeah so I do have one more thing to show you if you awesome. make lunches and I know many of us do if you make lunches for school um, if I make lunches and I'm not gonna lie I give my kids lunch money probably more often than I should but if I make lunches I do it right here so a really helpful tip is to have what you need right where oh you need look at that. that so i have a cutting board to make the sandwiches i have my, my snack cups my lunches everything is right my lunch boxes paper bags everything's right here with the seals to go on the containers so that i can quickly make lunch and send them out the door that's awesome so you're not hunting around to find all your bits and bobs that you need exactly yeah that's awesome and, and all your supplies i saw your your bread is here in another container and Everything is right where you need it. Uh, everything's need right where you need it. That is awesome. So, any other last little bits, or do we do most of the tour there? Um, I think the only thing we didn't show was this was the seal standing up in the drawer. Oh yeah, let's do that. Okay. Right. So you have a lot of seals for your cereal containers, your your plan overs. We don't call them leftovers. We call them plan overs. <laughs> um, if you have a lot of seals that you're trying to find home yep. with and they're smaller, just get one big container and stand them all up so that you can see each seal. So you're not hunting and digging underneath. Everything is right where you can just grab yeah, it. It's just right in a row so that you're not, um, and they're not sliding everywhere and they're not stacked. Um, yeah, you can see the, see the moment. I'm trying to think, was that horizontally? They're vertically. Vertically, there yeah, we go. They're standing, they're standing <laughs> I, like, up. <laughs> I know I didn't say that right. They're, make sure they're standing up. Yeah. Yeah, so that is awesome. That is so many great tips on how to keep your yourself organized because these are all things that we all tend to have in our um, kitchens anyway so we want to be able to um, keep them organized so we're so thankful to have Jennifer come in and show us everything so um, just really quickly before we wrap up here um, Jen how can somebody if they're interested in some of the things they saw today how can they order from you um, we well I'll put in a plug for you because you're so nice to come and well, give us all you. this information I appreciate it yeah um, well you can reach me on Facebook I'm uh, Jennifer Banks on Facebook if you want to go to my website, it's jenbanks.com with one N, J-E-N-B-A-N-K-S.com. And that will take you right to my Tupperware website or 902-691-4845. Awesome. And she's tagged in the post too, so um, you can go to her first Facebook page as well and um, reach out to Jen. And um, if you have some ideas or you have something that's cracked or broken or Absolutely. just want some ideas, more ideas on how to store Tupperware, use Tupperware for your storage. Um, she's the girl. <laughs> she's Thanks the one. So she's the one to know. So um, just want to say thank you again for tuning in. And um, if you do need help with a kitchen reorganization or you need some ideas or just need somebody to come in and help you uh, manage it, um, we're at yourlastresort.ca. And we're happy to come in and help you with your kitchen as well. We've done a few kitchens already and it's a lot of fun and um, we love doing it. We love helping people. And sometimes you just need that little bit of a kickstart to get you going so that you can keep it organized from there. So, um, and so next week, um, we're going to be back on Friday and it is tax season time. Isn't I haven't it? done mine yet. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> April. It's tax season time. So what we're going to be doing is next week I'm going to be talking to Carrie Jones from TC Jones Accounting. And um, she's an accountant, and she's going to be giving us some tips on how to get organized for tax season. Maybe it's too late for this season, but at least you'll help you get organized um, for the coming year, especially when you're <laughs> small business owners, right? There's a lot of receipts and things that you need to Absolutely. keep track of. So anyway, Carrie will be on with us next Friday. And we'll be able to um, talk with her on your organizing for taxes. And one last thing, I said if you're if you're not tired of listening to Jen and I, we're gonna be. Um, you can hop over to Burger Wars <laughs> for Campaign for Kids um, Facebook page, and we're gonna be doing a Facebook Live at the restaurant where she also works at SJ's Diner. So um, you'll see. Uh, we'll be there. We'll be there in a few <laughs> minutes after we leave here. We're gonna change gears. That's why I'm wearing my uh, Burger Wars T-shirt. It's our, um, <laughs> our other life. So um, busy moms, right? Yeah. 
many things that we're doing. So anyway, so just thank you again, Jen, for having us into your home and giving us a tour. And I know I learned a lot of things. And I'm going to go home and reorganize my Tupperware. (laughs)